Hello everybody! I hope you are having a fantastic day. I just finished building these two retro machines and I need to install some DOS to an SD card and I thought I would show you how I do it. So I recently made a video on how to install DOS 7, Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows ME to one of these SD card readers, but this procedure is different enough that I thought it deserved its own video. Now, um, I've been using these SD card readers for a while and I finally settled on this brand. Um, and you don't have to use this brand, but Gintion. Um, I've used these for a while and so much, liked them so much that I bought 10 more of them uh, and they've just been working like a champ. Now, um, the idea is that you will install DOS or Windows to this SD card and that seems pretty straightforward until you realize that all the DOS tools and everything expect you to either have a virtual machine or a floppy drive or something like that that's working um, in order for you to install it. So you sort of get this chicken and the egg where you can't do one thing without the other and it's just really annoying. So um, I have a better way. But before I get into it, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Uh, not all old computers can boot to SD cards and other large drives and things like that. And sometimes you need something called an XTIDE. And I say it over and over and over again, PCB Way helps me keep these computers running and helps me do it affordably. You know, a card like this is $80. A card like this is $50. A card like this is maybe $35 to $40. Um, but on PCB Way, you can get what I call the $4 XTIDE. And this is a little something I came up with, which is a way to accomplish the same thing these things are doing um, using your internal IDE controller for about four bucks. I also have a $5 version that's a little bit more fancy. But the point is that you can go on PCBWay.com and you can click on my shared project and you can uh, add this into your cart. They only take a couple of minutes each to build. You program the little chip, which on the $5 IDE you can just do inside the computer itself. And um, yeah, and you're off to the races. And so things like this take old computers and make them so much more useful. And that's possible because PCB Way will deliver stuff like this to your door for, I think I spent uh, like $14 on 20 of these cards. And so it just amazing. Got here a little bit over a week. Easy to solder, easy to work with. And so I want to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this project. So because I just made a similar video, I'm going to go over the procedure a little bit faster. And if you want to see a slower version of it, uh, I'll have a link to that in the description. But anyway, all you need to do is go and download this file from this link. And the neat thing about it is it's only 256 megabytes or so. And uh, you can take any single SD card from 256 as large as you want to go. Now, the fact is you're not going to really be able to use more than eight gigabytes. So you can buy these 32 gig cards that I absolutely love. And if you want to repurpose them later, that's fine. Or if you've got a card that's eight gigabytes or less, that would work too. So you're going to take it, you're going to download the file, you're going to extract it, and you're going to use a program called Belena Etcher. And you're going to use that to burn the image to the SD card. So as you can see here, it doesn't really matter what size SD card you put in. You'll be shown that you have a 237 megabyte uh, hard drive here. And you can put that in, try to boot it, and make sure everything's good at this point. Uh, but we're going to need to come back to the computer when you're done anyway. Let's take a look and see what's on the drive. Uh, we'll go a little bit out of order here. We've got Check It, which is just kind of a nice tool to make sure all of your ports and your mouse and everything is working. You get some basic benchmarks and stuff like that. You've got version uh, 1.1, 2.1, and 3.0 in here. Make it nice and easy to do that. Um, you can also do some benchmarking of your system with DOS Bench. If you don't want these utilities, you can just delete them. Uh, we've got Phil's Comp, which is from Phil's Computer Lab. There's a little install file here that'll get you some basic uh, auto exec and config SYS set up for your computer, CD-ROM drivers, all that kind of stuff. So very, very handy there. Um, so we're going to come back here and we've got Win Files, which is uh, Windows 1.0, 1.04, 2.11, 3.0, 3.10, 3.11, and Windows, I think that's NT351. Um, I haven't installed that one on here. But anyway, uh, most likely you're going to want either 3.11 or 3.0, possibly 2.1. Not even 100% sure Windows 1 will run on DOS 6.22, but you got it if you need it. And then once you're done, um, so you can just install it you just come in here to your normal setup or install thing and then once you're done you can delete all the ones that you don't need so uh, very very handy then back here in the DOS we have all the most important files at least 
of DOS 6.22. So you've got your format and your sys and your F disk and all that kind of stuff, which is going to come in handy. So the next thing you need to do is to partition the drive. Now DOS 6.22 uses FAT16, which means that you're going to be limited to uh, two gigabyte partitions. And I think the best way to do this is to do a two-step process. So we're going to load up one of my favorite free tools called Mini Tool Partition Wizard. And we're going to use that to expand this first drive that started out as 237 megs all the way out to the two gigabyte limit. Now that we're in here, you can see that this uh, 237 meg drive is really 32 gigs. So we're going to come in here and we're going to click this. And uh, actually, we're going to come down here. We're going to click this and we're going to right click and we're going to hit move and uh, resize. And we're going to tell it that we want a partition size of two gigabytes. Just put a two there. Don't try to drag it left and right. Just put a two there. Once you've got on the two gigabytes, you just hit the OK button. Every once in a while, it'll say that it fails. You can just go ahead and do it again. We're going to hit apply and we're going to hit yes. And there you have it. Now DOS is kind of picky about having extended partitions and all that kind of other stuff. So rather than doing this in the partition wizard, I like to go over to F disk and do it over there. So let's go ahead and boot the machine and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in F disk and load up the F disk program. And we'll just show you what we've got here on the drive, just a two gigabyte partition. So we need to fix that. So you're going to want to create a new partition and it's going to be an extended partition and just let it take up all the space that it has. Now you need to fill that partition with some logical drives. So we're just going to go ahead and let it add the uh, most space that it can to each one. So we're going to create logical drives in the extended partition. It'll suggest a size and just take whatever it suggests. Do that for all three until you wind up filling up your eight gigabytes if your card is that big. Then hit the escape key to exit and your computer will reboot and you can format some drives. At this point, it's really dealer's choice if you want to format in DOS or Windows. If you want to format in DOS, then you can format your D, E, and F drives by doing format D colon, E colon, or F colon. At the end of every format, you have the opportunity to give the drive a label. And uh, after that, you are pretty much good to go. You can install Windows from the WinFile directory if you want. Just pick your version and go. And uh, I really hope this was helpful to you. I've got links to everything in the description, the hardware, the software, everything you need to know. There's some other videos that explain some stuff. So, hey, thanks for watching and have a great day.